In this video, I'm gonna give you my take on what's coming to Home Assistant. Here we're looking at the beta version of the release, so it's not the confirmed version, but it's gonna give you a good flavor of what's coming next in the Home Assistant world. But first, let's roll the intro. You'll find a link in the description down below with all of the release notes. The biggest headline feature of this release is the ability to connect your storage in Home Assistant to your NAS network attached storage. We will now be able to add network mounts into Home Assistant so we can use our NAS for storage. An example here, we can see that there's one for media. So that will enable us to use the media tab in Home Assistant and connect directly to the media on our NAS. Then we have another cool one for backup. So these are actually great use cases if you have a NAS. And if you haven't got a NAS, then you can check this video over here where I talk all about NASes. This is the actual interface of how it's going to look and you can see the usage, backup, media, and share. Here you can put the IP address in and you can pick your different protocol, either using Samba Windows or DNFS. Moving on to the next feature, we have some cosmetic changes to how lights are currently operated. This is going to be useful if you have like colored light bulbs in Home Assistant. So as you can see from this video, it's quite simple to switch the color that you're using, but you can actually hover on top of it, hard click, and then pick a new favorite. And you can see that it appears. You have your plus buttons and your minus buttons to remove favorite colors from your lights. We have another menu overhaul. This time the integration page has been overhauled. You can see how the services and the entities and the devices are now organized under the integrations. So when you click the cogwheel, we actually got up here to a brand new page. And an example of it is over here with ESP Home. And you can see a nice page where you can see the integration entities, you can find things that have been discovered. It looks actually a great way of organizing your entities and your integrations. Shifting gears now and talking about automations, we have this awesome contribution made by uh, Car Watts in this, in this release. Apologies if I botched the name. And it sounds simple, but it's literally a cut, copy and paste. So if you have parts of your automation that you want to move, let's say you want to move them in an if condition, now you can see this animation here, then you can easily just cut and paste. What I was doing previously, I was doing three dots, editing YAML, and then take the code and then move that across. This is going to be an easier way with fewer clicks to achieve the same thing. If you're a fan of Blueprint, a couple of good improvements coming in this release. There's a new Blueprint page, and in there you can actually look at your Blueprints and see what is referencing your blueprints, if there are any like automations or scenes that are using the blueprint. Also, which I really like this, uh, Home Assistant is gonna help you, prevent you from accidentally removing blueprints that are still in use. The next one is an example where the community made their thoughts quite clear. By popular request, the information of when the entity was last changed is coming back. So this six minutes ago under the percentage of the bed light it is coming back to the entity information dialogs, which is quite good. And if you click on the minutes, you can actually find the precise time when the entity was last changed. If you didn't think the previous features were cool, then this next feature will certainly help you out. Here we're talking about major performance improvements. Python 3.11 is what Home Assistant will be running on top of. So just to remind everyone, Python is the core language that Home Assistant is written in. That means that it's going to be faster. There's also a new SQL Lite version that will help speed the backend operations and it should be consuming less resources at runtime. If you want me to test how the performance has actually improved, let me know in the comment section down below and remember to like this video. There's a bunch of improvements around Z-Wave that will enable you to easily troubleshoot some RF issues in your network. We also have new entities, dates, time and date time. Few minor ones, we have uh, improvements with the Roborock integration. Android TV remote now includes a media player entity. Samsung TV now gets a remote entity, which enables you to pass commands to the television. And if you're interested in having more accurate weather information, you can use AccuWeather with new sensors. You're also now able to follow your favorite YouTube channels 
as sensors in Home Assistant. Few of the braking changes, Google Nest, the YAML configuration has been fully removed. So you'll need to have ported your configuration from YAML base into UI. And there are a few more like this. For example, the Samsung Smart TV that's been completely deprecated in terms of the YAML configuration and now it's only UI. These were all of the better changes that are coming soon in Home Assistant. Let's see how many of them actually make the 06 release in June, but I'm sure they will come to the platform soon. This is Jeff from Smart Makers. If you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe to the channel and you can watch this other video here for more Home Assistant delight.